Harry's wife. The lazy, faking grifter. Hello, I'm H.G. Tudor. It's universally accepted that narcissists, at the very least, will be difficult to somebody, somewhere. For instance, there are those individuals who are accused of diva-like behaviour, with what are seen as excessive demands, that the rider, when they appear in concert, is ridiculous, that things have to be just so. Nevertheless, they are tolerated. Why? Because that person delivers. The performance that they give, the crowds that they draw, it essentially makes it worthwhile putting up with their seemingly over-the-top demands for a room that's completely white, for ensuring that people have to wear a particular colour, that people can only address them if they're spoken to first, whatever it might be. Those narcissists, which are in the entertainment industry, who are at the top of their game, that draw millions of people on their tours, that are fantastic composers of music, brilliant singers, possibly those that are uh, hilarious comedians, whatever it might be, it's deemed, yes, they're a pain in the arse, but it's worth putting up with because they're brilliant. There are, of course, many other narcissists who are tolerated because, whilst they are a royal pain in the backside, the relevant organisation, promoter, publicist, whoever it might be, recognises that so long as we keep them propped up, people will have an interest in them, and it would be suicidal to tell the world how they really are, because then we would slaughter the very thing that we're trying to promote and make money from. The individual themselves may not have any particular amount of talent. This is where many of your reality TV stars are found to be in this particular stratum. That as a consequence of often being a narcissist, being gobby, being opinionated, having those sharp elbows, they can make what can be seen as entertaining television because they're so controversial. But beyond that, they offer nothing. They're thick. They have no interesting opinions to provide. They're not well-read. They're not particularly educated. They don't have any talents with regard to singing, writing, whatever it might be. All they're good at is stirring up controversy. And that can only take that person so far. Nevertheless, the true horror of their behaviour is kept under wraps to ensure that a more public-friendly face is portrayed so that the relevant hangers-on can milk that individual for as long as they possibly can. The more that they keep the real dark side of their behaviour under wraps, the greater the longevity that this individual has, and thus more money can be made from them. There is little point in telling the world about how they really are, as that would result in a bubble bursting. And in effect, those that benefit off that individual would be cutting off their nose to spite their face. The sharp-nosed business operators that ply a trade from taking nobodies and causing them to be loved by the public for a short period of time know what they're doing. As I mentioned, all narcissists will be difficult at some point. And Harry's wife is finding now that as a consequence of her entitled approach to life, her innate laziness, her view which is Pay me now, and I might get around to doing something later. Or, I'm Harry's wife, you should just pay me because I am her. Has resulted in her output at Spotify being neither prodigious nor entertaining, with the effect that she found that the contract was not being renewed, and it has cost her that residual benefit, which is money. Because Spotify has got rid of her, although, of course, it was dressed up that there was a mutual parting of the ways, although that didn't fool anybody, the fact that Spotify has got rid of her has meant that they don't have any vested interest in essentially protecting her, portraying her in a particular way, publicising her in a friendly manner. 
the gloves are off. Bill Simmons was the first, describing the fact that she and Harry are fucking grifters. He basically said what so many people are thinking, and as a Spotify executive, his words carried weight. But it isn't ending there. As can be the case with a difficult narcissist who has caused problems for an organisation, when that organisation has parted company, in some instances, because it no longer has a vested interest in protecting that individual, the cash cow need no longer be looked after. The actual truth of that person's behaviour becomes broadcast, circulated, leaked, however you want to describe it. And we now see that is what appears to be happening with Harry's wife to affirm her status as a lazy, faking, grifting individual. The Daily Mail, through Charlie Langston, reports... Harry's wife is accused of faking interviews for Axed Spotify podcast. Industry sources claim the Duchess got staff to do chats with Archetype's guests, then had audio of her voice edited in to the final episodes. Podcast website Podnews reported that multiple sources had claimed that some of the interviews on Harry's wife's podcast were done by other staffers. The same sources allege that audio recordings of Harry's wife asking questions was then edited into the final episodes that were streamed on Spotify. This is not a surprise. The Duchess of Delusion regards herself as so important that she doesn't even actually have to bother to go and interview people in the flesh. Instead, it's organised that a staffer does it on her behalf, and then she can just sit down, not having to mix with the little people, by then just asking the questions herself. She is devoid of talent. But moreover, this fake interview approach is demonstrative of the laziness that's embodied by her narcissism. If her narcissism can gain a result, by the path of least resistance it will go there, without any due regard, of course, for collateral consequences. Accordingly, if Harry's wife can assert control and draw fuel and gain the residual benefit of money by not actually turning up and conducting the interviews, but by just reading out a list of questions which are recorded and then edited in, she will do so. Of course, her mind is not thinking, hmm, that's not very polite to my guests, is it? Also, if this were to be leaked at a later juncture, uh, this wouldn't look rather good for me. No, instead I'd better do the interviews. Of course, her mind doesn't work like that. Governed by her narcissism, her mind is directed to cause her to try and get as much as she possibly can with the minimum of effort, something we have seen time and time again in, with regard to her behaviour. That works at the time. It allows her to assert control and draw fuel and caters to the residual benefit of the payment for a little bit of work. But the narcissism has no regard for what might come next, months down the line, when, with Spotify having parted company from working with her, it's then leaked how difficult she was and how little she was involved in the actual process. This isn't a surprise to people, but it doesn't make her look good. And it also demonstrates to anybody else who might stupidly be interested in signing her up for something. Do you really want to be involved with someone who wants to take millions of dollars from you and puts in such little effort? Do you really want to work with somebody who takes the piss out of your organisation and doesn't show the common decency to the guests to even sit and look them in the eye and ask the questions. Why would you want to send money to somebody who behaves this way? The short answer is, you would not want to. Yet this is once again demonstrative of the way that her narcissism functions. She has no due regard for the way that people are. Wanting to be addressed in a courteous manner, uh, manner for them to be asked the questions directly. She's perfectly content to create the impression 
Once again, the narcissist performance of one, where she creates the impression that she was involved, that she asked the questions. In actual fact, somebody else did the heavy lifting, and she just breezed in when it suited her to go through a list of questions, not have to sit and listen to anybody, not have to sit and make small talk with them, not have to chew the curd. But no, she could just go in, ask the questions, have them edited in, and then waltz out again and pick up the paycheck. The article continues by explaining, Harry's wife has been accused of faking several interviews for her Axed Archetypes podcast by industry sources, who claimed that the Duchess had staff members on the show conduct interviews with her guests before audio of her voice was edited into the final episodes. The allegations, which come just days after it was revealed that Sussex's $20 million deal with Spotify had been ended in a mutual agreement, were reported by podcast-focused outlet Pod News. According to the site, multiple sources have claimed that some interviews on the show were done by staffers, with audio of Harry's wife's questions edited in afterwards. Although Pod News did not highlight any specific episodes where this might have happened. Harry's Wife 12 episode podcast featured a series of high profile guests during its one season run, including Mariah Carey, Serena Williams, and Mindy Kaling, the latter of whom actually shared an image of herself being interviewed by the Duchess when her episode aired. However, while Harry's Wife may have interviewed several very high profile guests for the audio show, this is not the first time the questions have been raised about her input into the interview process for other people who appeared on Archetypes. In August last year, podcast guest Alison Yarrow, a journalist from New York, revealed that she didn't actually speak to Harry's wife when being interviewed for the show, but rather a member of her production company. Alison, who appeared on an episode of the show called To Be or Not To Be, in which she explored the origin and plague of the word bitch, revealed in a social media post shared shortly after her interview was recorded that the chat had taken place with an audio producer called Farah Safafi. Sharing an image of herself in front of a sign for Gimlet, an audio production company, Alison then thanks Farah in the caption for being such an excellent interviewer. Last week, Spotify and the Sussex's audio production company Archwell Audio issued a joint statement about the decision not to renew Harry's wife's podcast for a second season, saying they had mutually agreed to part ways. The statement continued, We are proud of the series we made together. The decision to axe the Duchess's female foes podcast followed reports that Spotify had been engaged in discussions about renewing the series. However, those conversations are understood to have stalled. One day after news of Harry's wife and Harry's Act Spotify deal was made public, the streaming giant's head of innovation and monetization, Bill Simmons, spoke out to slam the Sussexes as fucking grifters in an episode of his own podcast. Unsurprising that Harry's wife, driven by her narcissism, hasn't been involved in the process to the extent that she might have portrayed. Her narcissism organises it so that she gets the maximum return on the minimum of investment without any due regard for the collateral consequence that occurs, namely, when news of this is leaked, that is broadcast, it not only causes her to not look good, but it also then leads to the potential damage as she's sniffing around for new deals to shore up her falling stock, as the star plummets from the sky, as the downward spiral gathers pace, you really then have to question who on earth would be interested in wanting to work with an individual that is now gaining a deserved reputation for being lazy and faking and grifting her way through life. I'm H.G. Tudor. Thank you for listening.